customer that doesn't tip, you're gonna get those. The no tipping customer, it's gonna happen. Oh, the, there's a breed of human beings out there and they're called non-tippers and it doesn't matter what you do, they won't tip you. That's something that comes with the territory. Uh, I think uh, you kind of got, got to grin and bear that because there's just as many people that tip well that, that don't tip at all. Well, first off, you have to be polite anyways. You say thank you and just kind of look at them and wonder. You're never supposed to say something, and I don't usually, but I just do like an extra look at them or something like, you know. Whether it's a tourist who just doesn't know the concept of tipping, foreigners, they just don't know any better, or a broke-ass student who's literally counting out their last quarter to buy that one domestic beer. Students, they don't have any money. You're, it's gonna happen. And generally, the tippers balance out the non-tippers. And you can't hate on people because you don't know their situation. Um, I don't really care. If you're nice and polite, like, I will still serve you. I mean, you're not gonna be you know, my number one priority, but. I mean, sometimes people just don't have the money, in which case, like, maybe you shouldn't be going out, but, like, I understand how it is. If they're cheap or rude, that can be dealt with in a number of ways. <laughs> and if they're not from here, you know, calmly and politely informing them of the, you know, what's customary here is, is just a nice way of doing that. Because there's certain, geographically, there's some places that just don't tip. I'm glad I don't live over there, but, uh, and those people sometimes come over here, and sometimes they don't know, but most of the times, they don't want it to. And uh, that's another thing that you just can't really change somebody's perspective. They, if they think that uh, people in this industry don't deserve the tip, they won't, uh, you just can't uh, change their mind. Which is fine with me, because when I'm three deep and uh, they want a drink, they get served last. So it hurts at times, but you can't complain. And I mean, at the end of the day, we're not here to demand tips. You expect people to give it out of their own free will. And if it's not gonna come out of your own free will, I don't want it. Sure, you can tip and still piss me off. If you uh, tip me and then call me an asshole, I'm probably not gonna smile. Oh, there are some customers who are great tippers and they're still assholes. Like, they're a high maintenance customer who expects more because they tipped you better than anyone else. I mean, money doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna be happy. Well, there's, there's guys who give you 20 bucks as soon as they get in the bar and then they expect to be served like that, like that, every time they come to the bar. I mean, if someone is out and out rude but they're a good tipper and there's another guy who's not such a good tipper but he's the friendliest guy in the world, I'm not necessarily going to go to the big tipper all the time. Meanwhile, I'm busy and there's so many other people who have respectively tipped me. Just because you gave me an extra 10 bucks doesn't mean you get special, special service. I may pay attention to you quicker, but if you're also an asshole about it, snapping your fingers or whistling to let me know that the big tipper's at the bar, well, you're going to be ignored just like everybody else. The best thing about being a bartender is different every day. You get to meet a million people, um, women. I have to say I love the hours. I love the people. I love the fact that I come in for four hours stand behind a bar, serve people drinks, get them drunk, get them happy, and hey, get drunk and happy myself. The money, the sex options are pretty good too. <laughs> There's a lot more people to meet, and of course you always look good when you're at work, so I mean, people hit on you a lot. Yeah, I used to have a following groupies when I was in my uh, pre-marital days, and you know what? It was the best of times. Um, the money's good money's real good. Um, you meet interesting people. You get to make fun of people. You make some money. You uh, work with interesting staff. I mean, you work very close with each other. It's a lot different than, say, working in a nine-to-five office job where come five o'clock, you all go back to your own place and you're strangers. When in the bar business, you end up hanging around a lot together and from there, um, relationships flourish. So. Get to meet people of all, who work in all different types of environments, business people, people from other countries, lots of tourists, travelers. Can't beat the girls that you meet either. Uh, that's always a bonus. Um, the job's actually pretty sweet when it, uh, when it goes well. Uh, you get to meet cool people. Uh, money's pretty decent. 
like it's cash at the end of every shift. You are walking out with like hundreds of dollars in your pocket. I believe the money and the fun and the partying is what really gets you in, but it gets you in when you're younger and you have more energy and stuff. And then like for myself, I'm not that old, but I'm, I'm tired now, like really tired. Problem is you'd be, if you're drinking when you're not working and you're drinking when you're working, then when is it that you're not working? And a lot of people can let that take over their lives and like enter problem areas where uh, the booze and the partying is taking over. Every day is different, you know, like it's, it's just like very diverse. Most of the time it doesn't even feel like working, which is, which is the sweet thing. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't think there's one day where I don't feel like going to work. Uh, because I'm gonna have a shitty day or something. It's it's always it's always a positive positive thing. I'm kind of stuck. I like the money. I like the hours. I'm so used to it now that I just can't picture myself doing anything else yet. I have to find something that's going to be as financially rewarding and as an exciting job where I can still meet and talk with lots of people. It's a fan industry. You can make a lot of money, good money actually, and. You still have, you can uh, be in the school, finish the school and be in the industry until you get a good job. I'm in school right now because I'd like to have an option for when I decide I don't want to be here, I don't have the energy to do it anymore. But um, I can't see myself making the same money when I get out of college. It's lively. What person wouldn't want to have a job where you get paid to serve people drinks and dance and have a good time with everybody else? I think that's most definitely the appeal. The bar industry is a drug. It's, um, it's addictive. It's glamorous. It's almost like being a movie star without the fame. Uh, you get new groupies in the bar industry. It's, it's that natural high. It's a rush. When you're in the zone, when you're busy, depending on the type of bar you're in, there's nothing like it. It also burns you out faster than everything. It's, uh, like you said, it's sex and drugs and rock and roll. That's the best way of putting the bar industry.